We need to end a culture that protects the abusive regardless of how much they entertain or how much they earn. For those who profit from their success, no matter what, there is someone who doesn't assault people who can do your job. I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. you I don't know what me. the motion of my actual hand was. But you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How would you start you physical fights? You are baby! Because you, the fuck up, Because you start please. physical fights? I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. I'm Amber Heard, and I am honored to work with the UN Human Rights to promote a message of justice and equality around the world. I will respect your rights regardless of who you are. I will uphold your rights even when I disagree with you. When anyone's human rights are denied, everyone's human rights are undermined. So I will stand up. I will raise my voice. I will take action. I will use my right to stand up for your rights. Please welcome Rebecca Ruiz, Senior Features Writer at Mashable, in conversation with Amber Heard, actress, activist, and human rights champion of the United Nations Human Rights okay. Office. Um, children's, ho children's hospitals, or work with children in, um, in children's hospitals. And um, I guess there, uh, well, I still do today, um, I guess working in those hospitals for me has, uh, has, has really um, taught me um, the main component of service, which is humanity. The humans are they are the core component of, of service. And that's why um, when I started developing a relationship with the United Nations Human Rights, I found, uh, I could not have found uh, an institution more aligned with my core principles or values, an institution um, that was uh, founded on and, and serves to represent and protect uh, the articles that set forth in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. What does Amber mean by human rights? She goes on to tell a story from her childhood. She engaged in physical fights because she believed it was her right to hurt others because they were bothering someone else, even though the classmate didn't know her or even appreciate her effort. In fairness, fairness is always stare. It, that's that's always mattered to me. Um, you know, uh, I, I I feel like I, I I always say I have I have this allergy to it. You know, when I was a little kid, I was like I wanted to be you know popular or something or liked in school like everyone else. And I remember some kids are picking on someone who was um, you know had some, some physical challenges that um, the rest of the kids didn't have in school, and they used to make fun of him a lot and had no friends. And I remember how, how many f I would come home having. So I've gotten in so many fights in defense of my friend because I was just so, so, uh, um, it, it, it grieved me so much because I think at the end of the day, some part of me knew without being able to articulate it in this way that, you know, it, 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 fairness is fairness for a reason. If, it, if it's okay for, for people to behave in this way to him, then it would also be for, for me. Instead of dealing with the conflict in a peaceful way, she resorted to violence. As she has continuously from this point on, she learned that violence was the easy route. And I think, it, you know, part of why I feel so aligned uh, now as a champion of the United Nations Human, human Rights, sorry, it's hard to say, um, part of why I feel in alignment with them is because the basic pledge involves saying if, if anyone's human rights are denied, everyone's human rights are denied. Then this has been echoed in so many ways by so many uh, leaders and thinkers. Um, and so, you know, f for me, uh, I, I remember, you know, coming home from school and you know getting in trouble for yet again another fight. And I remember I was like, you know, I think I said hi or something to the boy I've been defending in school for, you know, sacrificing my one shot at popularity. It didn't never happened anyway, by the way. Uh, and, and he was, he didn't really even know who I was. And I remember being like, what? This is, <laughs> being so upset. I remember, you know, talking to my mom later on that night saying how important it was for me still, still. And because it just felt wrong. But to see it codified, 
I mean, that was amazing to me, and I, I guess that's why I feel passionate about it. Um, what about action? What is your call to action for this moment in time, which is yeah. a very turbulent one? This is the this is the coolest. This is the coolest thing to me because you are asking me this question now in 2018. What month is it again? <laughs> You're asking me this question now in 2018, which would be such a fundamentally different question a second ago, not one second, but a, a year ago, uh, 10 years ago. I can't even imagine 70 years ago before, you know, when this <laughs> was initially adopted. You're asking me a question about action now. And the cool part of that is you have never been more powerful. We have never been more powerful than we are right now. It's never been a better time to be alive. Yes, there are so many injustices in the world. There are so many things wrong. So far we have to come. But we are not only enjoying the fruits of so many years of intense work done by thinkers, our, our ancestors and humanity to get us to a point we are now at with unprecedented ability to do so from our hand, literally in your hand. I'm just pointing at the one phone I see. But in your hand is the power to change the world and it's not hyperbole. It's evidence in the fact that look at how different the world was two and a half years ago. There was no movement in the, in the streets uh, um, there, uh, there were, uh, to address women's issues specifically. There was no one saying her story. What about her? There was no Me Too. There was no presence of that. There was no energy. It was a fundamentally different two and a half years ago than it is today. Why? Not because activists, uh, not because celebrities or activists or politicians or people in power stood up and made the change, or not because uh, uh, the points were salient and resonated. No, it's because now we have finally reached a, the, 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 the pinnacle where, or the, the, the pinnacle of the collision between our awareness of our place in the world with, with technology and our unprecedented ability to be increasingly connected to an increasingly growing global community. We now have met that with our ability to do something with it. We are now burdened, but also driven by unprecedented levels of access to information, involvement, community and power. The power you can see in the streets, you can see in the way that Yesterday, I was in discussion uh, amongst people that don't work in my field, and I remember asking very politely, a woman and a man were speaking, and they were talking about wages. And she was mentioning, you know, she overheard how much her, her the guy, the, uh, her, ma her male colleague has make, is making and was hired with, even though she was far, far more qualified and had been there longer. And she said, I went home and I felt, I felt so bad. And I said, I asked her politely, well, can I ask you what you did? Because I understand that. I, make, I am a white woman I make a, in the United States. So I can at best make 80 cents to my male counterpart's dollar. And that's not the case in, the, in my in industry. It's far, far worse in my industry. But let's say just working in the United States. I know it's harder to do the other thing, which is to have asked your boss to, to have demanded more, to have stood up and said, may I ask what the starting salary for this gentleman was, since we have the same qualifications, for example. So I was just curious, because two and a half years ago, I wouldn't have thought of it. I have been complaining with this big mouth I'm with, I've been burdened with, sorry. I've been complaining and talking about this and trying to engage this discussion since I arrived in Hollywood 16 years ago. But in the last three years, seeing the energy, the support, the galvanization, uh, the grassroots uh, 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 support that's come up uh, to change the communal cultural conversation and attitude made it possible for me to not even imagine not asking her, what did you do? And she, much to my relief, said, 
I went to my boss, I demanded more. And I said, and it worked, and she said, oh yeah, it did, but it was not the point. The point was, the harder thing to do was definitely that, I'm sure, is to risk, especially if you are a woman, and I, I tend to be, fine, I'm focused on women's rights um, uh, and women's issues, but, but I think that's because they're also <laughs> men's rights and men's issues as well. But I have noticed myself the power that we all have. Uh, uh, Mara up here speaking a few minutes ago, perfect example. Uh, it's no longer the job of activists or uh, 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 solely for activists, because I'd still like to be a part of the conversation. Uh, it's no longer the job for politicians or, or, uh, or outdated institutions. It's our job to make the world we want to live in. And it's not only our job, we actually can. It's evidenced every single day. We see the Me Too and the Time's Up and the Black Lives Matter and you name it. All of, the, all of these groups were started not by you know, people like me taking a stand, rising up, although I hope I added to some, some support in that. For, I hope I lend my platform, which I feel very blessed and honored to have. I hope it supported, but for, uh, my voice was able to be lent but to, to help someone who might not have found their own voice. But really, the change was made by people in this room. Everyone now owns the power. And I think that's the coolest thing, that, it's the coolest answer I could give you because you're asking me this now and it's changed as evidence as what happened in just two or three years in my life. How differently some of my issues were handled then versus now is a perfect example. The power is now in all of our hands and I'm so excited to live in this world because it's, it's much more representative of the world we want to live in. It's ours. After divorce and numerous gold digger claims from the public, Amber vowed to donate the entire divorce settlement of $7 million to charities, to Children's Hospital and American Civil Liberties Union. The latter later named her their ambassador. For years, nobody questioned if her claims of donations were true. In interviews, she claimed the settlement had been donated in full and that she wanted nothing. The, the, and actually were all kinds of accusations uh, flying your way when you said all this and then there was a divorce settlement, you got $7 million. People were saying this is all about the money, but then you did something that uh, twisted that whole argument. What did you do with that money? Seven million dollars in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los okay. Angeles. ACLU is a human rights organization. Sorry, ACLU the, is a prominent um, uh, organization, nonprofit organization in the United States. Yeah. It's called the American right. Civil Liberties Union, and they work on behalf of marginalized communities uh, on the ground and in legislative reform. Right. And well, more power to you because that's that's something that I've never I heard. I wanted of, uh, nothing. Sadly, it wasn't true. And the final payment of 2.3 million dollars is on February 1st, 2018. Right? The final payment, yes. So back to October of 2018, this was before Mr. Depp sued you for defamation, correct? Yes, that's correct. He didn't sue you until after the op-ed came out in December of 2018, right? He sued me in 2019. And the op-ed came out in December of 2018? That is correct. So in October of 2018, you had received your entire $7 million divorce settlement. You that, agree with me? That is correct. And you hadn't yet been sued by Mr. Depp. This is uh, October, correct. So in this October 2018 interview, you said that you had, quote, donated, end quote, your entire divorce settlement to charity, right? That's correct. And in fact, your exact words were, quote, seven million in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, end quote. That's, right? that's correct. I made that statement as soon as I got a divorce and we reached the settlement. That's when I pledged it, right then. And you say this because you, quote, wanted nothing, end quote. That is correct. But you hadn't donated your entire, entire $7 million settlement to charity at that point, had you? That's incorrect. 
Sitting here today, Ms. Hurd, you still haven't donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. Isn't that right? Incorrect. I pledged the entirety no, of Ms. the Hurd, settlement, $7 million to question. charity, and I, Hurd, I intend to fulfill Hurd, those obligations. Hurd, that's not my question. Please, what try was your to question? answer my question. Sitting here today, you have not donated the $7 million, donated, not pledged, donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. They, but I the don't. Ms. Hurd, I don't use it synonymously. That's how donations are paid. Ms. Hurd, respectfully, that's not my question. As of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money to the ACLU. Yes or no? I have not yet. And as of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, correct? I have not yet. Johnny sued me. So as of today, you have not donated, paid $7 million of your divorce settlement to charity, right? I have not been able to fulfill those, uh, those uh, obligations yet. And that's because you did want something, didn't you? I didn't want anything and I didn't get anything. You wanted Mr. Depp's money. Didn't get it, wasn't interested in it. I loved Johnny, that's why I was with him. You wanted praise for donating the money, right? That's incorrect. You wanted good press. In general, one <laughs> does want good press, yes. You wanted to seem altruistic publicly. Wasn't my interest. Um, my interest is uh, in my name and clearing my name. And at the time, I was being called a liar and my motives were being questioned. I did see it as important to clear that up. I wanted to make a statement to make sure that there was not any doubt that I couldn't be labeled these things just because Johnny was a bigger star and had more publicity reach. You wanted to remind everyone of your claims of domestic violence against Mr. Depp, right? No, I wanted to move on with my life. You wanted to make those claims seem believable. They are believable. They you were You wanted believable. them to be seen, you wanted to be seen, excuse me, as a noble victim of domestic violence. I have you? never, never wanted to be seen as a victim. Nor have you, I ever called myself one. You testified under oath that, quote, the entirety of your divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote, didn't you? That's correct. I pledged the entirety. No. Ms. Hurd, my questions. Your counsel will have time to redirect you after. You testified under oath, quote, the entirety of your divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote. That is correct. I pledged the entirety. I'm going to move to strike everything after yes. Uh, all right. There's nothing to strike here. No. Ms. Hurt, this is really inappropriate. I, I'll sustain the objection and we'll just move forward. Thank you. Let's move forward. Next question. Under oath, that statement wasn't true, was it, Ms. Hurd? I'm sorry, I don't follow your question. Sorry. You testified under oath, quote, the entirety of my divorce settlement was donated to charity, end quote. That statement wasn't true. It is true. I pledged the entirety to charity. The statement... When you say you buy a house, you don't pay Ms. for Hurd, the entire house Hurd, at one time. You pay it I'm over not asking, time. Ms. Hurd. All right, next question, please. Thank you. That statement isn't true today, as you sit here today, is it? It is true. I pledged the entirety But you didn't charity. donate it. Unfortunately, you didn't donate it. It's a yes or no. I haven't been able to obligate, I mean, to fulfill those So that's a no, right, Ms. Hurd? I, am, I made the pledge. I want to be very clear. I pledged the entirety. I haven't been able to fulfill those pledges because I've been sued. You had all of the $7 million for 13 months before Mr. Depp sued you, and you chose not to pay it to the charities you pledged it to. Is that I, correct, Ms. I Hurd? disagree with your characterization of that. Most of the money that was donated to the ACLU and CHLA in your name came from someone else. Isn't that right? I don't know what you mean by most of. 
Well, at least $500,000 that was donated to the ACLU in your name wasn't paid by you, right? Uh, I believe Elon made a donation in my honor on one of, one of the years. Yeah, and it didn't come out of your $7 million divorce settlement, right? No, nor did it count towards my pledge. And at least $500,000 that was donated to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles in your name wasn't paid by you either. Right, those were made at the same time. And it didn't come out of your $7 million divorce settlement. Nor did it count to my 3.5 obligation. Those $500,000 payments came from your new boyfriend, Elon Musk, right? Uh, he, I don't know if he was a new boyfriend at the time. You got him to pay part of what you promised to these two charities, didn't you? Incorrect. Because you wanted to keep at least some of the $7 million divorce settlement for yourself, right? You're very wrong about that. As you have said already, this can make situations worse because like for many women, men are fighting back who have been accused of this. And uh, your, your ex-husband uh, recently said in a GQ interview in a magazine, this is not true, that this, this didn't happen. So the fight continues, goes on. Um, you know, I can't speak about that. And she really couldn't as she was preparing to sue Johnny Depp for defamation at this point. Two months later, she would write the infamous op-ed that resulted in Johnny suing her. Amber hasn't paid charities, but instead, her then-boyfriend Elon Musk did. Even after this discovery, ACLU supports Amber Heard and refuses to fire her as an ambassador for women's rights. United Nation for Human Rights have removed her from their page. Shortly after the United Nations Human Rights High Commissioner parted ways with Amber, or the UN made it clear they stood with victims of domestic violence regardless of the victim's gender identity. I feel really honored that L'Oreal Paris chose me because L'Oreal Paris has always meant more than just beauty products. It comes with a meaning, an implicit message about worth. Yay. After a lot of pressure from domestic violence victims, who found it offensive to have a court-proven liar and abuser represent their brand with the slogan worth it, L'Oreal gave up and fired her eventually. She didn't appear at Cannes Film Festival where Johnny Depp's movie was set to premiere, and other L'Oreal ambassadors came to support Johnny Depp's comeback. More on the topic was discussed in video linked here. Amber Heard will officially return as Mara in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Despite the petition's overwhelming support, Aquaman executives decided to ignore the public's request to fire Amber Heard from the franchise. An honorable mention and enormous thanks belongs to Jean Larson, who started the petition that changed the world and whose efforts were crucial in getting the truth out there. Do you stand by your testimony and your accusations against Johnny Depp about abuse? Of course. To my dying day, we'll stand by every word of my testimony. First Amendment protects free speech. It doesn't protect lies that amount to defamation. And that was the issue in the case. Yes, exactly. You can't go into, the free speech does not protect you if you, you know, go into a crowded theater and you scream fire. My understanding of what that means is not just the freedom to speak. It's a freedom to speak truth to power. But truth is the word. Yes. And that was the issue. And that's all I spoke. I'm not a, a good victim, I get it. I'm not a likable victim. I'm not a perfect victim. I mean, you wanted to be seen, excuse me, as a noble victim of domestic violence. I have you? never, never wanted to be seen as a victim. Nor have you? I ever called myself one. When you wrote this op-ed, it was the height of Me Too. Legions of powerful men being canceled, losing their jobs. Um, did you want that to happen to Johnny Depp? Of course not. Of course not. This was a, a hoax. Call me a liar in, in every way you can. You issued a statement and part of the statement said, I still have love for Johnny. Yes. Is that still true? Yes. After everything? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love him. I have no bad feelings or ill will towards him at all. I, I know that might be hard to understand or it might be really easy to understand. If you've just ever loved anyone, it should be easy. 
Mr. Depp hasn't looked at you once this entire trial, has he? Not that I've noticed, no. You've looked at him, though, many times, haven't you? Yes, I have. You know exactly why Mr. Depp won't look back at you, don't you? I do. He promised you he would never, you would never see his eyes again. Isn't that true? I don't recall if he said that. One of the last times you ever saw Mr. Depp was when you met him in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? That was the second to last time I saw him, yes. And this was after you had publicly accused him of domestic violence. I got my restraining order before that, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is after you had obtained the domestic violence restraining order against him. That's correct. Let's please play Plaintiff's <sighs> Exhibit 1229. Um, for the record, it's at 1101 through 1209. I'm going to ask that it be admitted into evidence. Any objection to 1229? Yes. All right, one, two, two, nine. You want to enter it in its entirety? Yes, please. Okay, one, two, two, nine, entered in its entirety. Do you want to play your section? No. Oh, no, a hug will save it all. All this, all this, everything we just did. I just wanted to touch you. Really, after all the shit you just said? I just wanted to give you a hug. After all the shit you fucking used me up, you want to touch me? Please, please, talk me. Please stop. You're fucking nuts. Please, I just wanted to hug you and say bye. I didn't want to take that. We did that last night. It's fine. That was good enough. No, because I'm nothing to you. I will always be nothing to you. Calm. Calm. Sorry. Take what? You're not my friend. Please just calm. Please just calm. Calm. No, we'll never see each other again. Please. You want me to make you don't take my fucking glasses off. Please. You don't like fucking looking at not my fucking eyes? You will not see my eyes again. That's you and Mr. Depp in that recording. That is. And this is from when you and Mr. Depp met in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? Yes, that's what it sounds like. That was in the hotel. We met once after that as well. This is after you publicly accused him of domestic abuse. Uh, yes, and got my TRO. Yeah. And he tells you you will not see my eyes again, doesn't he? Uh, yes, he does in that recording. And he kept that promise, hasn't he? As far as I know, he cannot look at me. He won't look at you, right, Mr. He can't. One of the first questions your counsel asked you on direct is, why are you here? Do you remember that? I do. Let's please play Plaintiff Exhibit 357A, which is already in evidence, Your Honor. And for the record, it's 2122 through 2140. And yes. I, I'm a victim of domestic violence, and yes. I know it's a fair fight. It sees how many people believe or side with you. That's your voice on that recording, right? Yes, it is. And you were speaking with Mr. Depp? Yes. And you said to Mr. Depp, quote, you can tell, you can please tell people that it was a fair fight and see what the jury and the judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, a man, a victim, too, of domestic violence, end quote. That's what you said, right? I was saying it to the man who beat me up, yes. I thought it was preposterous. And the man you beat up numerous times. <laughs> right, Ms. Hurd? I could never hurt Johnny. You're here in this courtroom because Mr. Depp finally told the world that he is a victim of domestic violence. I know that he is suing me um, and has sued other people or corporations that have said that as well. You didn't think he would tell the world he was a victim of domestic violence, did you? I found it hard to believe that he could or that he would do that considering the relationship he and I had. I, I thought it would be crazy for him to do so, knowing what 
I know we lived through. Or, as you said to him in that recording, who was going to believe that Johnny Depp, a man, is a victim of domestic violence, right? With all due respect, I wasn't saying it because he's a man. I was saying it because he's a man who beat me up for five years. Mr. Depp is your victim, isn't he? <sighs> no, ma'am. And once he left you, you continued to abuse him publicly by calling him an abuser, didn't you? He is an abuser, and you can look either of us up online and figure out who's being abused online. Mr. Depp mentions Aquaman, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Mr. Depp got you that role in Aquaman, didn't he? Excuse me? Mr. Depp got you that role in Aquaman, didn't he? Amber Heard should be fired from Aquaman after she's been revealed to have abused Johnny Depp, who was fired from Pirates of the Caribbean after her claims he abused her.